Welcome back to Hobby Jogger Elite, and welcome back to yet another shoe review. Today, of course, we are talking about none other than the Endorphin Pro 3. I know the shoe has been out for quite some time now. I myself have owned it for quite some time now, but I've only recently got it to 50 miles and put it through its paces to the point where I could finally speak on this shoe in a more well-rounded, all-around comprehensive manner. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Talk about the shoe in a little bit of detail with the measurements, the numbers, all that good stuff, but really get into my feelings about the shoe, what it's been like running in it, and why I ultimately feel the way I do about it. So let's get into it. Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, of course, the third iteration of the initial Super Shoe offerings that Saucony has come up with in recent years since the Super Shoe blow up in the running shoe industry. The first and second iterations of the Endorphin Pro were definitely Super Shoes, but that's kind of where the discussion ended when it came to stacking up against other Super Shoes. They were never really comparable or put in the same tier as any of Nike's Super Shoe offerings, or even the first or second iterations of Adidas Adios Pro models, whatever it might be from a variety of different brands, people never really considered the initial Endorphin Pros to be marathon-capable Super Shoes. They were very dense and firm, and people used them for workouts. They seemed like solid speed day shoes, but it didn't go much beyond that when it came to racing at the marathon distance, which is typically where people are at least when it comes to my channel my content and a lot of the content I consume on YouTube looking for a solid super shoe something that can take them the distance whether that's a half or full marathon it just wasn't really delivering in that aspect and then comes along the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 which was a huge huge step forward when it came to the construction of the Endorphin Pro from the softness of that midsole foam to the reimagining of the upper everything sort of changed so with the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 which is by far the best Endorphin Pro to date we have one of the more traditional running shoe silhouettes I would say when it comes to the super shoes out there it has 39.5 millimeters of stack height in the heel down to 31. Millimeters in the forefoot, likely 39.5 in the heel to come under that world athletic standard rule of 40 millimeters max in the heel. Nonetheless, an eight millimeter drop. And in a standard men's size nine, Saucony has this listed at 7.2 ounces. I have it in a size 10 and it's pretty much right at eight ounces. So I would say it's kind of standard with a lot of other super shoes these days. It isn't exactly the most lightweight, but you're not getting an absolute clunk of a super shoe. Up to the point when the Saucony Endorphin Elite came out, it did still have that top end premium foam, the Power Run PB foam, full length carbon fiber plate, snappy, gets you up on your toes. It is a all out race day shoe. Now again, I've put 50 miles into this shoe and it's taken me a bit of time to do that. So let's get into my experience running in this shoe. The runs in this shoe have been few and far between. And those runs have been a marathon simulation during a long run workout in my previous marathon lead up. I did 16 miles at marathon pace straight in this shoe. I also did a bit of a mixed bag of a workout first ever time I ran in the shoe which was a four mile tempo followed by a couple mile repeats a couple 800 meter repeats I also did a mile repeat workout prior to what I hope to be the first time I raced in the shoe the race ended up getting canceled though so that was just a few mile repeats I also did a 10 by three minute threshold workout and finally the other day I did 16 by 400 meters in the shoe so I've used it only for workouts obviously I've Run recoveries in between reps, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, I've I've literally run every single pace, worn these for every gear on my running pace checklist when it comes to everything from marathon pace to half marathon effort or like a low or even high end threshold effort, all the way to like my VO2 max anaerobic states when I'm doing 400 meter repeats or 200 meters, whatever it might be, I've hit every pace in this shoe. And it seems to be capable, I would say, at each 
each one of those paces, but I would say out of the super shoes I've tried, which have been the Vaporfly version one, the Alphafly version one, Adidas Adios Pro 3, and this shoe, I would say this shoe is the least super shoey feeling when compared to all of those. I would say the Adios Pro 3 isn't quite where I would put like the Vaporfly or the Alphafly, but I would say it still has more of that super shoe feeling to it. This shoe, not to say that it doesn't feel propulsive or bouncy or like it's giving you a ton of energy back. I feel like it genuinely does, but I can point to those other super shoes and say that they honestly perform just as well, if not better than the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 for me when it comes to each and every one of those paces, of those types of workouts, those race paces, whatever it might be. I don't know if it's just that my personal running mechanics don't work with this shoe. I would say that is not the case because I'm one of the biggest Saucony Endorphin Speed fans and frankly, one of the biggest Endorphin Shift fans. I would say out of the third iteration of the whole Saucony Endorphin lineup when it comes to Speed 3, the Shift 3, and the Pro 3, this is ranked last on my list of those shoes. I find myself having a better time running in the Shift 3 and the Speed 3 than I do with this shoe. Obviously, I wouldn't reach for the Shift 3 if I'm doing a speed workout. This definitely excels much more in that department, but I find myself myself genuinely enjoying the experience of running in the Shift 3 and the Speed 3 for their intended purposes on whatever days I reach for them than I do when I reach for the Endorphin Pro 3. It feels capable, it's very smooth at marathon pace, but I find the Alpha Fly version 1 and the Audios Pro 3, for instance, much more capable and noticeably like performance enhancing when it comes to that pace. And every time I sort of step on the gas a little bit more and increase the pace, I feel like this shoe has to work just a tiny bit harder. Another thing I've experienced with this shoe is every time I run faster than marathon effort or marathon pace in it, the next day on like the ball of my feet, like towards the forefoot, I guess it would be like where that rocker starts. I find my foot to be like extremely sore in ways that no other rocker shoes, no other Saucony shoes, whether it's the speed or the shift, no other super shoes, no other running shoes in general have made my foot feel. For whatever reason, every time I run fast, faster than marathon pace in this shoe, I can guarantee that I will be sore on the ball of my feet the next day. And I don't know why that is, because again, I enjoy rocker shoes. I've never had issues with them before, but for some reason, this shoe seems to give me issues and some soreness there, which makes me hesitant to even give the Endorphin Elite a try, because that seems to be even more aggressive in its rocker geometry. So until it proves otherwise, and one of these times when I work out, this feels more useful and better than the Alpha Fly or the Adios Pro 3, which are the other primary super shoes that I am wearing on a regular basis at the moment. This just won't be a super shoe that I'm really reaching for. And I tried to save it for racing, but at this point, putting 50 miles into it, putting a variety of paces into it, I would not pick this shoe before the Adios Pro 3 or the Alpha Fly version one, which again are my other two primary choices for super shoes. That said, I still think this is by far the most comfortable super shoe I've ever worn when it comes to the amount of room I get in the upper when it comes to just like the underfoot feeling of the foam generally if you're just like standing around or walking around this is the least jarring least weird feeling super shoe I've ever tried by far the most comfortable super shoe no doubt about it but in terms of performance I just don't think it's still like stacking quite up to what I get out of the Alpha Fly or the Audios Pro 3. So those are just my feelings on the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. I still think it's a good shoe. I still enjoy running in it. I just don't think it's quite at the very, very top end of the running experience or super shoes in the way I would describe this experience of running in the Alpha Fly version one or the Audios Pro 3. Let me know if you have similar feelings about this shoe. I feel like I'm probably in the minority because it seems like everybody who has tried this shoe and talked about it seems to absolutely love running in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. And I think it has its like strong spots when it comes to paces, when it comes to types of running, but it certainly, again, is not my first choice. Would I recommend this to people? I think it's probably the most accessible, most comfortable, most 
for the people super shoe out there. I think this would fit so many different types of runners, so many different types of sizes, shapes, you name it. It is probably gonna work in the Endorphin Pro 3. And I think that similarly to the way that the Endorphin Pro 1 and 2 were discounted, the Endorphin lineup in general, always discounted when the newest iteration comes out. This will likely be discounted as well. It's not really on a discount right now. The cheapest you can get it anywhere is I believe Amazon for like $200 right now. It's still a standard 215 or 225 everywhere else. It will likely get discounted when this newest iteration, the fourth version, the Endorphin Pro 4 comes out here in 2024, which reviewers, running influencers, people who have early access to these shoes are already saying the Endorphin Pro 4 and Endorphin Speed 4 are absolutely amazing. So maybe you want to wait. You just want to try the Endorphin Pro 4 instead of the Pro 3. Let me know what your experience running in the Pro 3 has been. Let me know your thoughts if you agree or disagree with me. Otherwise, that is everything I have to say about my first 50 miles in the Pro 3. I'll continue to run in it because I paid for it and I still think it's a comfortable super shoe. It still can get the job done in a lot of respects and I'll be likely saving my other shoes for racing. So this is probably just going to turn into a training shoe. We'll catch up next time. Peace. Thank you.